Hey hi everyone, this is Mukesh Otwani once again from learn-information.com. Today in this lecture, we are going to talk another interesting function called wait for enabled. Okay, so again, it's a dynamic wait. So in the last lecture, we have already seen that how to wait for an individual, you know, element to get displayed. In a similar way, we are going to see another function called wait for enabled. So before I jump into the actual function, let me talk about the scenario. As you can see, this is one of the site which I have taken for sample, which is Internet Heroku app. Again, concept will remain same. So don't be very specific to one application. Just understand the concept and then you can implement in any application. So if you see right now, this, uh, I would say input box is disabled, right? So I cannot type anything here because it's disabled, right? Now, the moment you click on enable button, you can see it waits for a couple of seconds and then it will get enabled. Now I can type anything. But if you notice one thing that this loading, which is happening, right? It's dynamic. Okay. It might come after a few seconds. It might come after a few minutes. So we don't know, right? So I cannot use browser dot pause because we don't know the time. It should be dynamic in nature that if it is not coming within this time frame, okay, just wait, wait, wait. And once it is enabled, then you can do your operation. You can also, you know, give the timeout that yeah, wait for maximum 30 seconds or 60 seconds that within this time frame, if it is not getting enabled, then you can fail my test. So let's see how we can do that. So before we, uh, you know, type anything here, uh, sorry, before we click on enable, let's try to type here and let's see what error we will get. Then we'll click on enable, wait for that uh, input box to be enabled and then we will perform operation. So in this example, what we did, we just uh, loaded a URL, then we maximize, then we clicked on a button. So what I will do, I will copy this so that we can save some time. And uh, this is the file that we have. Okay. Wait for text copy. So I will rename this and I will say wait for enable dot JS. And if you see the file is almost similar, it is just, we need to make few changes here. So the first of all, I will obviously change the URL. The URL was something else. Now, in case if you are new to this, okay, then I will link the video, which we discussed in the last uh, example that how to wait for particular element to get displayed. Okay. So if still, I will uh, give you what exactly we're doing. So first of all, we have a describe block, which is actually our test suite. Then we have a uh, it block, which is basically our test. Now we are loading our URL. Then we are maximizing the window. And what we will do now, I will click on, or maybe I will just type here. Okay. So for type, I will use this form or since we have only one input box. So what I will do, I will just press control F here, double slash input. Okay. So we have two input. One is radio button. One is checkbox. So I will say at the rate type equal to text and we have only one text box. So it depends on your application. You can do that as of now, this is my particular input box where I want to type. Okay. So I will remove this and I will simply say await and I will call this as input or type. Now, basically I need to type something Okay, so I will say input type dot set value. Let me enter, let's say Mukesh. Obviously in this case it will fail because that is not enabled right now, but I want to show you what kind of error you will be getting. So I will write NPX web driver IO run, which file we want. Okay. Sorry. By mistake, I hit entered. Let me run again run then i will use webdriver io config file now i want to run the specific file which is wait for enable.js okay so instead of typing i will just copy paste here and hit enter let's see the execution analyze the error and then we will fix it so it will take few seconds and it should start the execution of one worker started at 
and yes start it in chrome it will load this application and it passed okay so let's do one thing uh, give browser dot debug okay because I don't want to close the browser so the moment I say driver or debug it should stop here I want to see the current state and before we run this let's use await here okay now let's run this and let's see so we also have one of the function right is enabled that will give you whether this particular element is enabled or not so let's wait for the execution okay so as you can see the execution has stopped okay now you can go to the browser or uh, if you see it's not typing anything okay it's not throwing any error here but if you see even though the set value is not working because that particular element is not enabled now okay so now if i si simply press controls c it will stop okay so now what i want i want that first it should click on enable and then it should wait until it is not enabled and once it is enabled we can type something so the first thing that i will do i will click on this button called enable so i'll say find a button and the button text is enable so before typing this now let's create another one i will say const and i will say this is button await i will use dollar and this is our x path so basically this is our web element and now i will use click again so again await button dot click now after click i want to wait for this particular element okay so this particular element basically is not enabled as of now so this input i will say await input type dot uh, wait for displayed so anyways it displayed so this is not going to work we need to call something called wait for enabled now this is going to wait until this element which is input type equal to text is not enabled and once it is enabled it will move to the next it will say set value and it will come to the debug point so anyways now debug is not important so what i will do just to show you this i will pause this for a few seconds so that you can see the final result in your case it's not required it is only for demo purpose i'm adding two seconds of wait so it will enab get enabled set the value pause for two seconds and then it will close the browser okay now notice one thing it will be waiting okay you will see it's a dynamic wait so the moment it will get enabled it will type here we go after two seconds it will close so this wait for enabled is actually waiting once it is enabled immediately it is going and typing Mukesh and after two seconds it's closing so now if you don't want you can remove this now run it once again and it will be very fast okay so you will not be able to see this type operation but yeah our main purpose was dynamic wait for this button to be enabled So if you go with uh, uh, is displayed, it won't work because it's anyway displayed. So in this condition, wait for enable will work. Just notice now. Okay, wait for it. And the moment it will get enabled, type and done. Right. Very interesting. The only thing is what if this element is not getting enabled at all? Okay. So this is exactly the same scenario that we discussed in the last session that max. Okay. Or I will say default. It will wait for 10 seconds. It will wait.
for 10 second if within 10 seconds it's this button is not getting enabled in that case it will again throw error okay but suppose in your scenario that button or that element is getting enabled after 15 20 25 30 maybe one minute in that case you can again pass here the time off okay so uh, let me show you the official documentation just search for web driver io okay just search for wait for enabled and the moment you click on it so now you can see we can also pass the timeout timeout message and interval how do we have to use just inside this we can pass timeout and within this timeout if this is not getting enabled it will fail otherwise it will pass okay and if you want to reverse the condition that wait until it is not getting disabled you can just pass reverse equal to true so instead of creating two different functions they just added one parameter that if you pass reverse colon true it will reverse the condition okay so let's interesting right now before we end this video i want to give a small task or assignment i i want you to give a try okay so if you open this application so you can see anyways this password field is disabled so you can't even you know type here but if you still want you can use javascript executor but there's a small challenge now that the moment I click on show me okay so what it does it will enable this password field after 15 seconds and once it is enabled then only you can do the type operation and any other operation which it supports now if you go with the current function which is wait for enable that won't work because by default it waits till max 10 seconds but this is taking 15 seconds so in this case now you have to use wait for enable then you have to use this timeout and you have to give 15,000 here. Okay, so that's your task or you can say assignment. Please give it a try. And uh, if you face any issue, let me know. I also want to show you uh, that uh, one of the function that before calling, what is the status and after calling, what is the status? What do I mean by this? So before calling this button, I want to make sure that this particular uh, input box is disabled so I will keep it here okay and now I will use console.log and I will say enable status I will use await and input type I just want to see whether this input type is enabled or not so I will say is enabled so obviously in this case it should return me false right because it's not enabled so I will say before and I will call the same function after this so the moment we click on button it will wait for enable and once it is enabled again we are checking is this enabled this time it should give me true so first time it should be false second time it should be true okay so let me run the last command and you will see this time you will get enable first as false and then true so let's wait again if you don't want to go with this you can also write your if else conditions okay you can handle the exceptions and contain it's up to you but since we already have these predefined functions so why not use them okay it will save a lot of time that the advantage of using frameworks okay so first you will notice it will be giving you false as you can see enable status before false the moment it is getting enabled it is saying enable status after is true so i hope you got the concept and please try to complete this task or assignment just click on this button wait for 15 seconds once it is enabled type something and exit okay so that's all for this video guys in case if you find something new out of this channel then yes please do support subscribe this channel share with your friends colleague and if you face any other issue please let me know in the comment section or you can send me email as well that's all for this video guys have a nice day bye bye